I'm Dr. Amanda Childress, and I'm here to teach you about the Whole30 program. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a doctor of pharmacy, also known as a PharmD, but I haven't practiced conventional pharmacy for the last 10 years. I have been working at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor, and I'm practicing what I call holistic pharmacy. So what I do is I use my knowledge of anatomy, physiology, as well as biochemistry, and what I know about natural health and muscle testing to make programs for people to help heal and repair naturally. And in many cases, I'm able to help patients safely wean off of medications when appropriate. What I have learned through this transition and through my work is that there is amazing power connected to food. Food has the ability to create disease, but it also has the ability to give the body the means to heal and repair it. And in that regard, this is a very important workshop I'm going to do today because you're going to learn a lot about your relationship with food. So let me pull up my presentation here. And I'll show you my slides. And as I go through these slides, I don't want you to get too hung up on making sure you read everything on them because everything that I'm gonna show you here is available in the books as well as the website. So you may be asking yourself, Dr. Amanda, why do you want me to do the Whole30 now? The holidays are coming up. You know, we're going to be having all sorts of treats. I'm gonna make grandma's recipe of pie. You know, why now? Well, the point of doing it now isn't that I want you to miss out on the holidays. It isn't that I want you to start tomorrow, but I want you to be prepared to start in January. So January is typically the time that people are most ready, like they've done their full holiday indulgence and they're most ready to start making their healthy changes. And I sure don't know about you, but I'm ready for a better year this year. So um, we'd like to strike while the iron's hot, as they say, and January is usually the time. I personally do a Whole30 every January, and I invite patients to do it with me. I have coached hundreds of patients over the years through the Whole30 and have more rounds under my belt than I can count. But each time I do it, I still learn something new about myself and about my relationship with food. I'm not recommending you do this because I think you're fat or because I think you're gonna be a bad boy or girl over the holiday, or any of those other ideas you may have, the whole purpose is <clears throat> to help you get a reset after the holidays and learn more about how food affects your body and your health. So what is the Whole30 program? I've heard many um, ver various um, explanations of it. This is my, in my own words. So a challenge to spend 30 days, and this is 30 days straight without interruption, eating only real unprocessed foods and eliminating foods that have the potential to inflame you, that may reduce your consumption of more nutritious foods, and that are likely to trigger bloating or sensitivities. So that in a nutshell is the Whole30. There are so many reasons why I love the Whole30. I am a professional dieter. I went on my first diet when I was seven, which was a low fat, low calorie um, exploration of misery and despair. <laughs> but I have done Nutrisystem, I have done Weight Watchers, I have done Tops, I have done, there's a whole list. And I don't feel happy about the fact that I've done any of them. However, the Whole30 is one of those diets that, or sorry, I'm gonna call it a program, not a diet. It's a program that I always learn something useful and I always feel healthier, both mentally and physically at the end of it. So some of the reasons I love it is it's a common sense approach. The idea is you eat real unprocessed food without the chemicals in it. I mean, it's pretty simple. You're eating real nutritious food. It's easily customizable to fit different needs and lifestyles. So, you know, depending upon how you like to eat, you can pretty much accommodate that because there's no certain pattern of you have to eat these specific foods or at this particular time of day. This also allows some flexibility as long as they don't block results. So there's certain things that are prohibited, but other things that are wide open. 
It hits the reset button on your health. So you develop some new patterns and you get out the things that are um, making you feel unwell. And then you have a better baseline. It also helps you to identify trigger foods for health issues because it's going to eliminate many of the common allergens or sensitivities. And the focus is on your relationship with food, not your weight. This is crucial. I see way too many times with myself and with others that you go on a diet, it's healthy, it's helping, your body's healing and repairing. And then you step on the scale and you get discouraged because, oh my gosh, I ate really, really well, the best I've ever eaten. I haven't lost a pound. So that's the wrong kind of thinking. We are looking at health, not weight. And this also gives you awareness about what's in your food. This is huge. I have so many patients that think they're eating health foods. And, but when they actually start reading the labels, which you have to do while you're doing the Whole30, they realize, hey, this wasn't necessarily as healthy as I thought it was. So you finally learn how to recognize what's in your food. So who should do the Whole30? Well, here is my short list, which is not limited to healthy people. You don't have to be sick to do the Whole30. Even if you're healthy, this is a new way to kind of deprogram your eating habits and see what your relationship with food really looks like or if there's any other benefits to be gained from changing your habits. People who want to cut cravings, people with unresolving health conditions. So there could be a food or eating pattern that's holding you up. So this will help you to identify that. People who want to reset their health or reboot their habits, honestly, most people are good candidates. And then people who feel stuck on their current eating plan. So it really doesn't matter um, what kind of eating plan it is, or you may even be happy overall with it as a lifestyle, but you feel like you've plateaued a bit, or you still don't um, feel as healthy as you would like to. An example of this is I've had some people who are on the keto program who love their diet, but they've been a little bit stuck in their progress for a while. So then I'll have them do the Whole30 as kind of like a reset before they go back onto their keto diet. And sometimes they realize, oh, this keto cookie that I ate or protein shake wasn't necessarily doing me so much good. So who should not do the Whole30? This is not necessarily a hard and fast rule, but in general, I wouldn't recommend someone with history of eating disorder to do this. Um, I definitely don't recommend um, restrictive in any form um, diets in those cases. People who feel overly restricted by the rules, even if you have no history of an eating disorder, if you see these rules and all you can think is, oh my God, this feels impossible or it feels like torture, this isn't the right time for you to do the whole 30. There's lots of good things you can do, but this isn't the time for this one. People who will take not finishing as a failure or a shameful event, that is not going to work out because this is a fun experience. This is not like a, a do or die thing. And then strict vegans or vegetarians. So there's nothing wrong with attempting the Whole30 if you are a vegetarian. There are some modifications you can do. But if you're very, very strict, the Whole30 could limit a lot of your food sources and protein sources, which could be not great um, if you're a vegan because you may not get enough protein. So here are real life results. Anything on this page is something that I've observed in a patient that I've coached through the Whole30. So I've seen patients who had infertility that after doing the Whole30, they conceived. I've seen this more than once. It's pretty powerful. Diabetes under control off of medications and insulin. Improvements in PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome or other menstrual issues, even things like endometriosis. Energy improvement, that's a pretty big one that goes across the board. No arthritis and um, loss of pain or body aches. Sinus infections gone. Headaches gone digestive issues resolved and improved mood. I've had quite a few patients that when they first started a program with me, I said, okay, just go for it. Do the whole 30. And honestly, those patients don't stay patients very long because often they get better really fast, which is great news because that's the goal of my program, not to create lifelong patients. And then they send other people that they want to help in 
And my goal is to help as many people as possible. So I love this as a tool to do that. So here are the rules. And all the rules, if you do this, you need to read them in more detail, but you can get these straight from the Whole30 website or the books. So do not consume added sugar, real or artificial. This includes, but um, it's not limited to maple syrup, honey, agave nectar, coconut sugar, date syrup, monk fruit, stevia, splenda, equal, NutraSweet, and xylitol. So if it is a sweetener, do not add it. And if it, even if it's the last ingredient on the label, you cannot have it on this particular program. Do not consume alcohol in any food form, not even for cooking, and ideally no tobacco products either. That is not a hard and fast rule. If you are a smoker or you use smokeless tobacco and you're not ready to stop that, but you wanna work on food, you still can do it. Just realize that's another source of toxicity while you're on the program. Do not eat grains, wheat, rye, barley, oats, corn, rice, millet, bulgur, sorghum, sprouted grains, and all gluten-free pseudo grains like quinoa, amaranth, and buckwheat. And even if it's in the form of, like for example, wheat or oat bran, germ, or starch, no grains at all. Do not eat legumes. Not that legumes are necessarily bad, but some people do react to them. So that's beans of any kind. Um, peas, chickpeas, lentils, and yes, that includes peanuts, so no peanut butter. Soy is also a legume, so no soy sauce, no miso, tofu, tempeh, edamame, and soy lecithin. That is going to exclude a lot of your pre-made foods right there. Do not eat dairy of any kind. There's one exception I'll talk about in a moment. And do not consume ba baked goods, junk foods, or treats with approved ingredients. So a pancake is still a pancake, even if it's made with coconut flour. So don't recreate some of your favorite comfort foods with Whole30 approved ingredients. You lose the spirit of the Whole30 when you do that. And do not step on the scale or take any body measurements for 30 days. That is another rule that I love. Don't do it. Don't think about your weight. So just as more clarification of not recreating things, this means no pancakes. Grapes, it doesn't matter what you make this stuff out of. Waffles, bread, tortillas, biscuits, muffins, cupcakes, cookies, brownies, alternative flour, pizza crust, or pastas, granola. Um, another thing that didn't make it up here are commercially, commercially prepared chips, even if they have Whole30 approved ingredients for French fries. So here's the fine print. There are exceptions to the rules and they are allowed. We have to draw some lines somewhere to make this doable. So here are some things that are actually allowed. The only dairy you can have is ghee or clarified butter. So all the milk proteins and solids are removed. So it's just the fat. Most people will not react to that even if they have a dairy sensitivity. Fruit juice. So some products or recipes will include fruit juice as a standalone ingredient or natural sweetener, which is fine for the purposes of the Whole30. Now, make sure if it's fruit juice, you have to check the label. It has to be the real stuff, not the, um, you know, like the ocean spray cranberry. That is not real. You have to make sure it's just the fruit juice and not from concentrate. Certain legumes, are, like green beans, sugar snap peas, and snow peas are allowed. And this is because you are mostly consuming the vegetable fiber, the pod part, as opposed to the bean part. And there's a lot of nutritional value in the pod. Vinegar and botanical extracts. Most of these um, have a little, they have a little bit of alcohol in them. So there's white, red wine, balsamic, um, apple cider and rice vinegar, um, vanilla with some alcohol extract. There's other um, botanical extracts. These are allowed. Just make sure you don't use malt based vinegar or extracts, which it will say that, it will say malt on it. They do contain gluten. And then coconut aminos, all brands of coconut aminos. So this is a soy sauce substitute. These are acceptable, even if you see the words coconut nectar or coconut syrup on the ingredient list. And then salt. So salt actually does have some sugar in it, the regular old table salt to keep the integrity of the, um, the iodine in there. So it's 
too difficult to avoid it completely because you will probably have to eat something out at some point. So this is the exception. So if you're saying to yourself, that's basically how I eat already, do I really mean to do this? The answer is yes, yes, emphatically yes. I cannot tell you how many patients tell me this. And then those same patients, if they do this, they find out, oh, well, I really don't eat like that as much as I thought I did. Or they're eating some pre-made things or foods from restaurants that they didn't realize had all this stuff in it. If you eat in a restaurant, you eat soy, pretty much. Unless they specifically say they don't use soy. Most restaurants cook with soy oil. Um, most salad dressings are soy-based. So it's really difficult to be fully compliant. So you may have a great diet, but there's still something to be gained from doing this process. So basically with the Whole30, the idea is you give it 30 days. And if all those rules made it sound restrictive, think about it that way. You don't have to count calories or carbs or fat or protein. You don't have to count anything. And you don't have to weigh yourself or weigh your food. There's some freedom in that, especially, you know, if you've been on a lot of diets before, think about that. You're going to get results doing a program where you don't have to do any of those things. It's pretty amazing. However, you must be 100% compliant, not cheat, not take a day off for a special occasion. So really, you're, you need to follow the rules exactly if you want to get the full benefit of the Whole30. So the shopping list, these again are all available. Um, on the website for free. You can download it and print it. It's in the book. So proteins, any eggs or meats are fine. However, you do need to avoid processed meats like pre-made sausages, burgers, bacon, deli meat, if they have chemicals or added sugar in them, MSG or sulfites. This is one of the pickier rules because most bacon has sugar. If you did this like six or so years ago with meat, this was tough because it was really hard to find sugar-free bacon. But now you can get it a lot of times even at Kroger. Um, Applegate Farms makes a no sugar added bacon. Um, and there are many others on the market now. So it's pretty easy to get. But that's one of the rules. And if you eat in a restaurant, you can't do bacon. Vegetables. So pretty much all vegetables are allowed. And it does allow potatoes and sweet potatoes. So you can get some starch here. Um, and all fruits are allowed as well. As long as these are fresh and real and not contaminated by chemicals or other ingredients. So your fats, pretty much any non-dairy, non-processed fat is allowed, um, except for vegetable oils or canola oils. Now canola oil, if there's a little bit of it in something, it's not a total, like it's not, it doesn't disqualify you because most health food restaurants are gonna have some canola oil in their food. Don't choose to consume it at home, but if there's a little bit in something that you pick up at the health food store, like from the deli or at a restaurant, it's, it's okay. We have to make this doable. But some facts you may not think about, duck fat, ghee, um, coconut oil, lard, tallow, you can use palm oil. Um, so there's a whole list. There's a separate list of cooking fats, um, dressing or eating fats. So for example, avocado oil, um, you can definitely use that plus avocados themselves. And then we have um, nuts and seeds in the fat list. Now, ideally with nuts and seeds, you don't want to over consume them. These can actually be trigger foods for some people with digestive problems or immune problems. So it's just um, don't lean on these too heavily because it's also easy to overeat nuts and seeds without thinking. I learned um, for myself that I can't have macadamia nuts around the house because there is no breaks on macadamia nuts for me. I could eat a whole container, which would be fine, except for there's a lot of fat in macadamia nuts. If you eat a whole container of those, um, you're probably not going to feel very good, which is typically what happens to me. So I don't keep those around the house because I've learned that about myself doing the Whole30. Herbs and spices. So 
pretty much any herb and spice you want to eat is fine as long as it's the natural thing. If you start reading labels, often there are chemicals and anti-caking agents and sugar added to many spice mixes. So just check those labels out really good. So there's a lot of pantry items that you're allowed to use. Um, so I recommend you review this on your own, but just some example, like you can get Frank's Red Hot. There's no sugar added to that and use that as a hot sauce. Um, you can also, in some of the recipes, you're going to use tapioca starch or canned pumpkin, almond flour. As long as you're not making a, a cupcake or a pancake with the almond flour, there are other uses for meals you can use them for. Drinks, you can drink apple cider if it just has the apple in it and nothing added to it. You can add, make drinks with 100% cacao, club soda, coconut water, coffee fruit juice but go easy on the fruit juice kombucha is allowed uh, mineral water naturally flavored water seltzer sparkling water tea and vegetable juice so there's a lot of options here a lot of foods that you can consume so here's my advice to you read every label there's no exception every label you will really learn how many chemicals and additives and sugar Sugar sneak into your foods. So reading that label is a huge health exercise. Your meal prepping is everything. Being prepared is what makes this doable. If you make you know, a large portion of meat and veggies and you have them all set out in containers, you know, when you're feeling hungry or like you want to depart, you have that there, you can eat it and that will save you most of the time. Keep pre-cut vegetables and ingredients in your fridge. So that way you can make quick meals and also have a quick snack. Because for me, if I have to go into the fridge and wash and cut the vegetables every time, honestly, it's a deterrent to me eating them as freely as I would. Make sure you take rescue foods along with you. So there are some Whole30 approved bars. Well, okay, I'll take that back. They don't call them Whole30 approved anymore, but they are compliant. They're called RX bars. There's a few that are not Whole30 because they're ingredients, but the majority of them are. And they're not good because a lot of people consume them like candy, so they can be bad. But if you keep them as an emergency food or you have to run into a CVS and grab something to eat, you can grab those because they have them. So in that regard, they can be useful, but don't add them into your daily routine. There are some Mara bars that are technically compliant. So those fall into that same category. Don't eat them like dessert. And like um, Whole30 approved, like Nick Sticks, these are jerky. You can keep those. I keep things like that in my purse or an unsweetened pouch of nut butter that I can just eat. So if I'm out and about and I'm getting really hungry, that'll keep me from having cravings or feeling bad. So I have something compliant there and that'll stop me from breaking the rules. Don't eat out unless you vetted the restaurant ahead of time. You know, if you don't want to be the person that interrogates the waiter, um, then call ahead. And right now, most of us can't eat out anyway, um, at least not in the restaurant. So this isn't as much of a challenge, but restaurants could be opening up in the near future. So just make sure you check on it because they're going to put a lot of sugars, soy, and gluten in these sauces. A few safe restaurants that you can eat at are um, actually Five Guys. Five Guys Burgers. If you don't get condiments on, on them and you get them in a lettuce bowl and you don't do the cheese, they actually don't put any weird seasonings or oils on them. And they don't use the peanut oil on it either. So that's um, an eat out food. Whole30 also had, or sorry, um, Chipotle also has lifestyle uh, bowls that you can get. So basically there's um, some of the meats like the chicken, um, doesn't have any disapproved ingredients. You can get it with the guacamole. And, you know, there's, so you can look up the Whole30 lifestyle bowl. So those are just a couple of places you can go that are safe. So most delis will not have compliant food. Make sure they have the ingredients listed. Even the market, they use a lot of soy. So you really have to check on that. And then the other piece is tell as many people as possible that you are on the Whole30. 
not that, you know, I want to shame you into doing it, but the more people you tell, the more likely you are to stick with it. It's just a human nature thing. Let your friends know if you can recruit a buddy to do it with you even better. It's motivating when you spread the word about what you're doing and, you know, get the support of others. And then don't wait for the perfect time to start. There is no perfect time. There's always going to be somebody's birthday or some celebration or some sort of anniversary. So just pick a time. Now, obviously, if you're going to France for the first time in your life, don't plan the whole 30 during France or a time where you absolutely know you're not going to be able to keep the rules or it's just going to be pure torture. But, you know, for smaller things, just pick a time and go with it and be prepared. And then also, if you want extra help, on figuring certain things out. You can keep a food and symptom log for yourself. So you can kind of figure out what your trigger foods are because you're um, you're going to be eating from less variety at the normal and your habits will change. So it's easier to kind of put together how foods are making you feel. So keeping those logs can make you more cognizant of that. And the other piece is you can do this. The biggest part is just deciding you will and you want to. And if that's the case, you can. The people who can't do this are people who truly didn't want to or have, you know, other reasons behind it. But if you decide to do it, it is possible and have every confidence you can execute this well. So I have some more advice. So this is not painful or punishment. This is an experience you deserve. So your viewpoint actually sets the tone for this entire challenge. This is a fun, exciting learning experience. This is a challenge, but it's not hard. You can do this if you choose to. It is for you and your health, and it's not about anyone or anything else. So when you set the tone like that, if you look at it like, wow, this is a challenge, this is gonna be fun. You know, I'm gonna learn new things about my relationship to food and how it makes my body feel and how it makes me feel emotionally too, and why you gravitate towards the food you do, then this is, you know, can be a great experience. But if you're just focused on what you're going to lose, you're going to have a rough time. So Whole30 troubleshooting, some people get into a little bit of trouble along the way, but here's some things I commonly hear. I'm hungry all the time. If you are hungry all the time, you're not eating enough. You're not getting enough protein with your meals. Um, You may not be eating enough good fat and you may not be eating enough quantity. There is a learning curve in the beginning. You probably have to eat larger portions than you're used to because you're not eating the foods that make you feel as bloated or as full as usual. And your body's kind of shifting what it's burning for fuel. So just listen to your body and eat more and don't worry about it in the beginning. And you'll over time, you'll get a better sense of how much food you actually need to eat. I'm having tons of cravings. Again, you're probably not eating enough food and you may need to make sure you're getting more good fat with your meals. My food is not satisfying. Same issue, (laughs) same issue. I can't drink my coffee black. If this is your issue, then you really need to think about why it is you're truly reaching for that cup of coffee. Is it the coffee that you're after or is it the sugar or the cream that you're after? But if you really can't drink your coffee black, you can do um, the full fat coconut milk from the can. There are many compliant versions. It's nice and thick and creamy. Um, You can also use um, one of the favorites I hear is there's a compliant nut pod, like an unsweetened French vanilla that most people are pretty satisfied with. I don't have time to make salad dressings and condiments. You can actually buy some Whole30 approved ones. There's more on the market than ever before. Um, One of my staples is I use the Primal Kitchen um, Chipotle Mayo. That's one of my favorites. I keep that in my fridge during the Whole30. Um, And Primal Kitchen has a broad array of compliant dressings and condiments. And also if you go into Thrive Market online, They do have a a filter where you can search only Whole30 approved foods, which makes it pretty easy. And then I'm bored with my food. If you are bored with your food, then you're lacking some imagination. There are tons and tons of Whole30 um, forums and uh, websites. Um, Just double check and make sure they're truly Whole30 compliant. Some places say they're Whole30, but it's because they don't actually have an understanding of what that really means. 
But for the most part, you can find tons of variety of different foods and different dishes you can make. that are actually very, very tasty. So there is a Whole30 timeline. I just want to show you this because you should review this. It's not going to be sunshine and rainbows the whole time you do this. It's not like, oh, I'm eating real food and I'm going to feel good all the time. There's actually a timeline of how a lot of people feel. Like normally the first day is easy. And then a couple of days later, people feel kind of hungover, kind of tired, headachey, not so great. And then they can get really irritable, even sleepy. And then in the second week, a lot of times people actually get bloated and their pants get tight. Think about it this way. You're eating way different foods. Your gut flora has to change. And sometimes that can actually create some bloated feelings. But it'll get better over time. You just have to stick through it. Most people have the roughest time about days 10 to 11. And cravings can slip in. And then typically around day 16, Whole30 says you get something called tiger blood. This is just basically when you feel really, really good, your energy kicks up. And, you know, this is kind of the goal of how people want to feel in the Whole30. Look, if you don't get tiger blood, don't worry about it. It's not really, don't have that as your goal. Not everyone does. Some people do start to feel really amazing all of a sudden, um, but some people, it may be more subtle. And actually, I've noticed um, as time goes on, more and more people need longer than 30 days to really hit that point where they feel so good. So don't worry about it. That's not really the goal. You're not doing anything wrong. Just keep going. And a lot of people about day 28, they're like, yeah, I made it close enough. <laughs> don't do it. Just keep going. But anyways, this can be a little different from person to person. Um, just review this and keep reviewing it as you go along the way. So how to get the best results. Don't eat dried fruit. It is technically allowed. Double check it though, because a lot of it's sugared. Um, but it is very, very high in sugar. So you can eat it, but don't overeat it. Um, and if you eliminate it altogether, that's better. Limit the intake of fruit, potatoes, and sweet potatoes. These are very hard, high in carbs and sugar. Um, incorporate intermittent fasting. Take limiting nuts and seeds seriously and make sure you're drinking plenty of water. Now, don't do these things if you're having a hard time. These are only if you are a more experienced um, dieter, I guess I would say, or you know, you're already pretty low carb or you know, when you're doing really well, you can start chipping back on these things, but don't start intermittent fasting if you're already having a rough time. Don't limit your fruit if you're already having a lot of sh sugar cravings. Eat them. Eat the fruit if you need to, to keep you off of the processed stuff. There'll be a payoff later, and as it gets easier, you can start cutting back. So there are some modifications that I recommend so we get a greater application of Whole30. Again, only do these if you're very you're already on a really similar type of diet. Or for example, if you're a ketoer and you decide to do it, you can do the keto mod. Or let's say you've done the Whole30 tons of times and you want to do a harder gradient. So the keto modification would be no fruit, no potatoes, no starchy vegetables. And then also the intermittent fasting can be helpful with that too. And then you're going to lean heavier on the fats um, when you do this. The autoimmune mod. So if you want to do the autoimmune immune protocol, which really, again, if you haven't done the whole 30 um, and you don't want like a stricter gradient, you can do an autoimmune protocol that's similar, that's not as restrictive as the whole 30. Um, I have done the autoimmune protocol or the autoimmune whole 30. It is pretty challenging but it's the same rules except for you also can't have nuts and seeds, no nightshade spices or vegetables. So that even includes paprika, no eggs and no ghee because it eliminates all dairy. But that's a possibility if you've already done this before or if you already have a pretty um, limited diet and you want to um, find out more. Okay, so what if you don't make it through the 30 days? What if you only make it 15? What if you look at this um, presentation and you decide, hey, I, I really can't do it. The point is not to make you feel bad or this isn't accusatory. This is not a test of how strong or disciplined you are. There's no blame, shame, or regret. If you break a rule, at the end of the day, it's up to you if you want to restart the whole 30 or not. If you're doing the rules in the purest sense of it, okay, then if, and I've done this before, 
I think this was my second Whole30. I'm like, oh, I got this. And I'm talking to someone and I'm, I'm really emphatically explaining something. And she hands me a xylitol mint while I'm talking and I grab it and pop it in my mouth. And then I say, oh shit, spit it out. And I realized I just broke a rule. At that point in time, I decided I'm going to start over. I was two weeks in and I started at day one. Did I really have to do that? Probably not. I mean, you can still get results from doing it, but I was being a purist because I coach so many people through it. I wanted to keep it very strictly. But if you do something like that, it's totally up to you if you feel like you want to restart or if you just want to pick yourself up and keep going. I have a patient right now that's had a few times that she departed and she just picked up and kept going and she's been going for multiple months now and she couldn't lose weight and now the weight's coming down and she's feeling better and better. That was the best choice for her. You can always try again. If you didn't make it, you can always try again later. It's totally fine. And you can do a modification of this that you can do. So if it seems too restrictive, fine, modify it. This might not be your starting place right now, and maybe later you'll be ready. So here are technically not the Whole30, but still great. So there's a vegetarian modification, and this can be changed from person to person, but you can still keep the rules, but allow nuts and seeds more often. You can allow legumes. Now, if you're a vegetarian, you suspect legumes are bloating you. That might not be what you want to allow. Um, you can possibly allow a plain protein powder. So for example, you can buy just pumpkin seed protein powder. And I pick pumpkin seed because I, I don't find as many people who react to pumpkin seed as they do other nuts and seeds. And then potentially allow and process pseudo grains. So maybe allow quinoa um, or amaranth. So this really depends on the individual, but there's a way that you can keep the main spirit in, clean up your diet, but still keep your vegetarian diet. And then there's the lower gradient mod. So let's say you just can't stop having dairy. So I've told this many times to um, people, especially if their main concern is blood sugar, um, do the whole three, but allow dairy, like in its pure unprocessed form. And it's technically not the whole 30 at that point, but it's still, they're still gonna get a lot of results out of it. So you can still eat an unprocessed version of your deal breaker food, provided ideally that it's not gluten or sugar, but you know whatever you need to do to get yourself on a healthier eating plan. And then for a lot of people too, if you allow recreation of comfort foods with approved ingredients, that might be where you're at. You may need to be able to make the coconut flour pancake and that's okay. Um, it's just, the point is to get yourself healthier, whatever that means. So here are resources. There are tons of Whole30 books. If you are going to invest the time into this, read at least one of the books because you're less likely to make mistakes and you're gonna get more out of it. Um, the one on the bottom, the Whole30, um, that one's my absolute favorite. There's an FAQ in it. Um, there's instructions on reintroduction. There's recipes, as well as explanations of all the ins and outs of how to do it. The cookbooks are basically accessories for it, um, just to keep it interesting for you. I know that there's also a friends and family one that's more geared toward holidays. And it's not on this picture, but there is the earlier book, It Starts With Food. I still highly recommend that one. Um, and that's, you know, after you've kind of done the regular Whole30 book, that book explains in more detail why the recommendations are what they are. So it just gives you a little more of the background of why these things were chosen. Other resources. So Whole30.com has recipes, a downloadable starter kit with resources and a forum. And then Google, which again, a lot of this is going to direct you back to the Whole30 website. But basically, if you don't know, you can Google, can I have blah on the Whole30? And you can pretty much find the answer pretty easily to any food you can imagine. And then you can also search, is blah Whole30 approved? And you should be able to find the answer that way too. I usually take my phone with me shopping if I ever have a question. So reintroduction, just as important as doing the Whole30 itself. And, you know, this is totally up to you of how you want to do it, but really, I recommend if at all possible, don't reintroduce um, cake, pizza, or cheeseburgers the day after you finish. And the reason for that is you spent 
30 days creating a nice clean slate where you are at a point where your body's clean enough that you can notice if you eat something that doesn't agree with it, you're going to notice the feedback. So if you eat a food with lots of different um, things in it that can be an issue, you're not really going to notice how you feel. So there are some other means for it. And again, don't worry about reading all of this because it's all available on the website. But there's the fast track. And you do it over 10 days. And so it's nice. You get it done in 10 days. Then you go back into your own definition of a healthy eating plan. But the con is you're eating a lot of foods, new foods in a short time. So you could get bloated. You could get tired. So that's a possibility. And then there's what's called the slow roll. So you can continue feeling your tiger blood amazing as you're slow rolling. So while you still enjoy worth it foods, as you come across them. Um, but the con to that is you may have a hard time figuring out what's affecting you because your work at food may have multiple um, ingredients and then it could be problematic. But whatever you do, just follow your process and don't rush through it because you worked really hard for this. So fast track. So here's just a recommendation. Fast track. So you do your whole 30 in the first 30 days. Days 31, if you really, really, really miss sugar, you can do like a high quality like cane sugar or sweetener. Or for me, um, on my last whole 30, I added monk fruit or the monk fruit erythritol blend. So just add that. You can put it in your coffee or something and just see how you do. I recommend if it's like the sugar, sugar, if you don't miss it, just leave it alone. Don't even go there. Days 32 to 33. So you go back on the whole 30 for a couple days. Day 34, we introduce a gluten-free alcohol by itself. If you want, it doesn't have to be these foods in this order. This is just a recommendation. So really the idea is that you add in these foods that weren't allowed one at a time. So you could eat legumes one day. Um, give yourself a couple of days uh, back on the whole 30 so that way you kind of see how you feel and give your body a chance to reset and then you add the next thing. The main things to notice on here is they wait till later, like day 43 to introduce dairy. And then they also wait um, till day 46 to add gluten grains. And the reason is these tend to take longer to eliminate, especially gluten. So if you add it earlier on, you know, it, it'll hang around your system longer. So if you can delay it, great. If you can't, if you really, really must have something, fine. But you could still give yourself a few days back on the whole 30 just to readjust and see how you do. The slow roll recommendations. So this has, doesn't have a timeline and this is really my preferred method. You, you keep eating mostly whole 30. And usually the first thing I do with this is I'll stop being so picky about you know, um, if I go to a restaurant or get takeout, I'm not going to give them the third degree about what oil they made it in or what's in that sauce or, um, you know, the condiments. So you can be a little looser. You can do like your bacon and not worry about it. So that's really like the loosest way to start your introduction. And then, you know, at some point, if there's something so special or delicious that you feel like you really, really want it and it's worth it to you, then have it and then go back to being mostly whole 30. Um, and, you know, ride that wave as long as you can. Usually this is what I recommend the most. Um, and they give an example um, over here. And again, you can get this right on the website. So someone had maple bacon on day 31. And that's all they did. And then day 35, it says mom baked an apple pie. It's not their favorite. So they didn't really want it and they passed. And then later it's their birthday. So they decided to wait till the restaurant to see if they wanted it. And then they had wine and they got a headache. But they did enjoy it. So, you know, it's kind of like now you at least can see how food makes you feel and then decide if it's worth it to you. So for a lot of people, um, the whole 30 isn't quite long enough. So you can experiment with doing it longer and doing more like a slow roll for a very long period of time. Because there's a lot more results to be gained. Um, I did a whole 30 and I actually loosened up a couple guidelines for myself so I could get through 45 days and do it over a holiday. And it went really well. I got results I don't normally get in just 30 days. Like some fine bumps on my forehead cleared up about day 45, which was pretty amazing. Or actually, I guess I made it two months on the whole 30. 
three months. Sorry. I did three months of the whole 30, but I loosened a few of the guidelines to help me extend it. Um, and again, you know, there were a lot more results doing it that way. So if you feel like you're feeling good and you want to do that at the end, um, it's definitely a good way to go. It doesn't have to be over. So a lot of people have maybe longer term health problems they want to tackle and they want to kind of get it all in one fell swoop, or maybe they feel like they need extra support to get through the whole 30. Either way, I am here for you. Um, you can come and see me in the office or do a phone appointment with me. If you'd like more help, this is the phone number to the Nutritional Healing Center where you can set up an appointment with me. Um, you can also follow, follow me on Instagram as I do the Whole30. I'll be sharing um, like some of the things that I'm doing and sometimes successes for my patients. So you'll get some more resources if you do that. And then if you search in Facebook groups, you search NHCAA Whole30, find my group and ask to join it. And, you know, we'll be posting regularly in that. I have a whole lot of whole 30 years in there and we help each other. So I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. Thank you so much um, for listening and joining me on this webinar. And I hope to see you real soon. Happy Whole30.